Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, wife of Clopas, Mary of Martha. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. The memorial of the Blessed Virgin is an important one in the church that has developed over the years. It has developed and been taken and placed all over the liturgical calendar until finally it came to rest here. And I think it's a rightful place for it to be. In a real sense, it's looking at the sufferings of Christ through the eyes of Jesus, of Mary. In the Passion of the Cross, I think, in the Passion of the Cross, um, the, the depiction of Mary in the Passion of the Cross was an important depiction. It depicted Mary, it depicted um, Jesus suffering but through the eyes of his mother. And, and I think one of the insights to me in, in, in looking at the Passion of the Cross is if you enough then to look at it to the end is that you begin to you understand the suffering that Mary went through. You understand the suffering that she had to go through. Anybody here ever had to or anybody listening ever had to bury a child? Yeah? To bury a child, one would know what Mary would go through. But it's not just burying a child, but to see your child suffer and die unjustly before your eyes as a mother. Therein lies the great suffering. Therein lies the great suffering of Our Lady. To be able to make the journey with her son, she never abandoned him. She never abandoned him. But she followed him all the way to the foot of the cross and watched him die. To watch anybody die is difficult, but to watch your son die is even more difficult. It's even more challenging. And, and that was the, the, the climax of the suffering of our lady. And so in a real sense, the church says Mary enters into a deep compassion with her son, with the sufferings of her son. She enters into a deep compassion. And this seven, and, and this compassion, this participating, see Mary is, is at one and the same time, one cooperates fully with, with Christ, with the, with the salvation of all. And in order to do so, she has to share in the sufferings of her son. Just as share in the cross of Christ Jesus. You know why? Because she too is a disciple. And Jesus says, anybody who wants to be a disciple of mine must renounce himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. There is no exception to that rule. So even the mother of God had to take up a cross and follow Jesus. And so she underwent seven sufferings. Seven, the, we call the seven sorrows of Mary. All right. On this day, when we we'll commemorate, commemorate on the memorial of this, the sorrow, our sorrowful lady, we commemorate or remember the seven sufferings of Mary. And the first is the Simeon's prophecy. Remember, Simeon said, "And you, Mary, a sword is going to pierce your soul too, and the secret thoughts of many will be laid bare." So he, he, from the very beginning, when imagine you bring a child to the baptized and find just say, hey, son, like this child looking like you catch child boy. Huh? A priest tell you that child will catch child from the from the time you bring a child to be baptized. Now that that is a what you are like, you know, 
Kok lebih nice lagi? Terus juga di sini jalannya ini. Hah? Atau yang mau belasih yang itu lagi jalannya? Hah? But this is what the prophet Simeon did. He saw Mary bringing the child to the temple and prophesied over the child. This child is responsible for the rise and fall of many. And a sword is going to pierce your heart. This child will make you pull your belly and fall. And that was the prophecy of Simeon. So that Mary is still suffering. The second, the flight into Egypt. When she recognized that Herod wanted to kill her son and she had to flee, she took refugee status. In from Venezuela to Trinidad. I mean, sorry. She, she took refugee status and she traveled uh, all the way from uh, Nazareth into Egypt where she stayed until her son was, was, uh, was fully grown or came back into Nazareth from Bethlehem. Three days lost in the temple, and the, the third suffering of Mary, not being able to find her son after when she recognized that he was lost in the temple. And I need to imagine the anguish and the pain and the, and the, and the anxiety of not knowing what happened to the child. Wait, I thought, I thought the child was with Auntie Mary Magdala. I thought the child was with, with, with this one. No, the child, I can't find the child. Can you imagine the anguish that would have been undergoing with, with Mary not being able to find her child after three days? And in, in the midst of all of that, that was part two of her suffering. Meeting Jesus with the cross. And this is not in the Bible, but in, uh, in the Passion of the Cross, we saw Mary encounter with Jesus when she fell, when he fell and she went to him. This is an artistic depiction or interpretation. I think some of the saints may have had these visions, but this is not biblical. But it was beautiful anyway, nonetheless. You know, to be able to see when both of their eyes may fall and when he is under the weight of the cross and the ground and she's helpless to do anything. Ah, I think that would have been the biggest cross. Not being able to lift up finger to help the suffering son under the weight of crucifixion. And we, we saw the kind of crucifixion that what it meant, we came to understand what crucifixion meant both in Hebrew and, and for the Roman people on the, when we looked at the Tridwell. And it's not just the crucifixion, no? it's the embarrassment. Because crucifixion was a, a very, it was a horrible thing and it was something that was reserved for the worst of the worst of criminals. Not only anybody was crucified, so the embarrassment to know that your son is going through this crucifixion. You want to be as far away from that child as possible. You don't want to know anything about your child. Yeah? You shame. But what did she do? She accompanied him. She accompanied him. She was with him. And when he fell, she was there to look into his eyes and say, Courage, my son. Courage, you're not alone. I'm here with you. And then, and then the crucifixion. To, to, I, 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 I don't know. When you understand, when I, when I came to understand what the theater reflected on the Tridwell, what the crucifixion was, and, and the fact that it was a process in which the Romans perfected to inflict the most amount of pain on anybody over the longest period of time. So it was a process that was inflicted to pain you and to shame you. That was the crucifixion. And there, you as a mother, hear your son under the cross, up, and, and you, you see him and hearing your son crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. Give me something to drink. Huh? And somebody bring out some, some, some vinegar. Huh? I don't know, I'm very happy to be married because the monk of us would have taken place there on the bottom of that cross. But it teaches us that in the midst of all that we, we go through at times, that to embrace all the pain and to allow that to be transformed into a space of prayer and offering is something that we all have to learn. Taking Jesus from the foot of the cross, taking Jesus down from the cross, and that is the image of the theater where the dead body of Jesus is placed into the lap of his mother where she embraces the dead body of Jesus 
in her lap. Um, and, and Michelangelo has a beautiful depiction of the, the theatre. And I love the fact one of my blessings when I was in Rome is to go to the Vatican whenever I want it. And um, just to look at the theatre, just to sit and look at how Michelangelo was able to, to sculpt this beautiful image out of solid marble. And, and just to gaze on, 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 on that and, and the power of that image there as Mary held the dead body of, 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 of her son in her lap. And Michelangelo made it look as though that, that it, Jesus was smaller than he is. So it, it, it made it look as though Mary was, that Jesus was re-entering the womb of Mary. So if, if, if you look at the image, you see how Michelangelo has so crafted it so that um, the image ex, uh, communicates a powerful image of Mary connected Jesus connected to the womb of his mother from whence he came. It's almost that he was, he was there, connected to that womb. And, and that would have been a great suffering of Mary. And, 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 and the seventh suffering would be her burial. Mary's burial. The burial of her son, sorry. And, and well, I, I don't need to say anything about that to you all. Everybody who has had to bury anybody who they love, we know when you reach by the great side, the kind of drama. You know, most people might be able to hold up in the church, you know. Most people don't do well in the church. You know, they put in a great song, they sing some nice lively songs and so on. But when you see the reach by the great side, is there is where the drama and the state place. There is where we want to throw themselves down the hole, you know. There is where we strong this break down. The burial is a very, very powerful sign, very powerful sign, and hurtful, because there's a sense of finality with the burial, there's a sense of finality, yeah, you put this coffin down the earth and you begin to cover it up, so all the time where your mind has been rationalizing and saying, well, you know, it's a good boy, or well, you know, I'm sure that there's a finality that shocks your mind into reality where you have been able to use all kinds of coping mechanisms before. There is, and that's why funerals are so important for closure and for healing. That's why this, this, this act is so important for, for closure and for healing. And so, you know, I, I unfortunately, COVID times have put us in a certain sense a restriction, which is not good, it's not healthy, but it is the law. It's not healthy for people not to breathe properly. But it is the law, so we have to abide. And so, my dear friends, this is these are the seven sorrows of Mary at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross, Mary stands at the foot of the cross. She stands at the foot of the cross and takes in every pain the sun and the gold. As a true disciple of Christ, the church says, she who shares most faithfully in his suffering may too experience the power of his resurrection. Let's not be surprised that Mary shares in the life of Christ. Let's not be surprised. She shares in that life because she was a faithful disciple. And that's why Jesus says, when the woman said to him, Blessed are you, Mary, because Blessed are you, Jesus, for, for the dress you suffer. And Jesus says, No, no, no. Blessed is she who heard the word and obey and follow to the foot of the cross. My dear friends, these two are invited to the foot of the cross. Let us bring compassion. Not just for our own family members, but for all humanity. To feel the pain and the suffering that all people are going through. And to enter more fully into the, ex into the experiences so that we might be there for them, that to support them and help them up, to show them that they are not alone, that they are never alone. 
but that the Lord himself continues to be with them and our Lady hear me with them in prayer.